Oh, I was gonna say, let me just scoot back here a little bit. Yeah, yeah. You were gonna, well I wasn't sure if you were gonna be on or off the camera. Yeah, I'll be on. I'll be on. Okay. The easy as I, all right. There you go. Yeah. Here we go. Well, I'm taking up a lot of space here. Yeah, you are. You're like man that. spreading onto the camera. Hey, how are you, everybody? Me, sure. I'm all like. Hey. Everybody loves Rain. All right, three, two, one. Hey guys, Jason from Critical Dice, and I am here with Ryan Hartman, Dragonborn Narcissist and Nar Blitzin, and Chris Straub, emerging as though from a Miss Straub. Like, who's this now? Chris Straub. Oh, set straight. You said it once, like a year ago. I did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's awesome. the original hidden lyric, right? Yeah. There's a lot of them. Yeah, there's a whole other verse. Yeah, if you do a spectrograph on the <laughs> on the song, you'll like see back them. some back masking. You yeah. Can read so, them, yeah, so let's start there. Actually, so you made the C Team introduction song. Did you write that? You don't need the words introduction song. I make the C Team theme song. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. You substantiate it out of yeah. 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 That's one way to think of it. No, I did do the song. Yeah, it was funny because the the beat. I don't even know the name of the person who did it, but it was a friend of Jerry's. And, it, and he gave it to him, but Jerry and I, like maybe, I don't know, four or five years ago, had wanted to do some song. Yeah. And he had this beat, and we couldn't do anything with it. Yeah. Just, at all. Yeah. And then I like revisited it just because, oh, the show could yeah. have a theme song. Right. And then I don't know, it just that was just the, it's what it needed. Yeah. It just, it just, the clicks. topic. Then it could, yeah, unfurl. Right. You invented theme songs. Yeah, when I yeah. thought of theme songs, which I thought this would be good for before a show to oh. sort of get people in the in a fun <laughs> mood. Yeah, to show them the, the theme of the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. if you uh, will. song -ally. Yeah, <laughs> melodically, <laughs> I would say. On the sonic spectrum. Yeah. Yeah. No, now, did, did Jerry help you write it, or is this completely you? Or No, it's just off the dome. So the just freestyle it. Just first, it. first try. And I, yeah, and I do it every time. I do it exactly the same <laughs> well, way. Turn my headphones up. <laughs> yeah. Well, I do know that you sing it before the show privately, right? Is that a ritual? That I've was heard like, correctly. Yeah, Kate started to do it, and then I would join her, mm. and then it became like a paranoia, right. as, as rituals do. Become. Right. If you don't do it, then someone. And, will get and hurt. I don't care if we do it before or after. I, I understand, but yeah, I haven't done it as much. We haven't done it so much, and it is true. The show's taking a. A turn. The first two seasons, yeah, this third, this third season, PU, there you go. Yeah, that's why. We know why. But Jerry will be upset if we don't. Yeah, do it. yeah. Well, you know, they say when this, a series starts going into space, like, you know, Freddy in space, it yeah. starts oh, to yeah. really, this is yeah. The shark, we left the shark back on Earth. Oh, yeah. We jumped the hell over him. We're in the ionosphere. We're like, see you later, shark. Yeah, is there a relationship to, like, when you, I understand if you jump the shark. <laughs> Distance you, above shark. Well, like, yeah, if you yeah. jump the shark and you land, you're, it, you blew it and now it's all going to be garbage. But while you're in that parabola, yeah. is it still uh, good? Or is, is it only bad here? Or is it the decision that makes it bad? No, I think it's the end. Oh, okay. In the midst of a mid-shark jump. So, Fonzie jumping a shark is awesome. And it's only afterwards. When he landed, he everybody was gross, like. gross. And you're like, oh, why did I cheer? They're just dirty. They're yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. What a decision. Don't make eye contact with them. Yeah. Well, since this is your final season, um, no I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> I was like, who told him? <laughs> you know um, that? Okay. okay yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I thought that was like, common we know. knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> we know that. I didn't know. Yeah, else because you're taking a pause for sixth edition to come out. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, exactly. So now, so you guys have been doing this now three years um, for yeah. C Team, right? And uh, Chris, you've had a, a longer history with uh, Acquisitions Incorporated. You did all of the kind of, what, what do you call them, the animation? At the the intros packs? for the A-Team. For the yeah. A-Team, yeah. Dun, 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 yeah. Um, and so were you, when they approached you to do that, did you have a vision for how that was going to go, or did you volunteer to do it? Like, well, how, how did that come to be? I thought you were going to ask another question. What, what do you think I was going to ask? Well, I'll answer that one also. Okay, uh, let's do that. <laughs> I'll, ask, I'll answer the question you didn't ask. <laughs> That'd be really helpful, actually. What I want to concentrate is yeah. uh, lunches and schools. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't want to address that, but I do want to address. Now, um, for the A-Team games, for the first time, like, that was sort of out of the the blamations which we did for uh, Penny Arcade TV at yeah. the time. The air but like that air hornsman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that aesthetic. Um, and I like like doing those. And it was just an opportunity to lean into that like trashy, quickly drawn. Yeah. And then I became very precious about it as the years <laughs> I was went gonna on. Say, yeah. And that's like, no, the point was it was it doesn't look good and it's yeah. like, you know, broken. Um 
the question I thought you were going to ask was when they approached you to do C Team, because the person who approached me was Ryan. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, yeah, that is the, yeah. kind of the natural progression yeah. there because you were in oh, yeah, yeah. Acquisitions Incorporated before you were in Acquisitions Incorporated. Because oh. there's like a thrift shows up here and there, like right before Viari joins, you're like, Emerging from the shadows, you know. Yeah, Kathris was there like as a joke because yeah. I because the thing was like I'm not ever gonna get to play. Right. And that was fun. I was okay with that, but I'm like that's my this is my place in yeah. this. I will draw the intros. Yeah. This is your kind of self insert. So yeah. But then the magical moment happens where someone approaches you to play in the C team. So tell me about how that happened. Like you said, you asked him, me. but who asked you? Uh, it was me. You asked your own brain. No, yourself. Jerry asked me. So I have been working on packs for eight years. I had previously been working, so we do packs in conjunction with our partner, Reed. I worked at Reed, interface with Penny Arcade, obviously, all the time. Three years ago, they actually asked me to come over on the Penny Arcade side, Mike and Jerry did. Right. So, and I was like, yeah, absolutely. And obviously, we, we work so well. The two companies do, and everyone was like, yeah, go do it. So I jumped over to the Penny Arcade side, and then I was like, okay, now that I'm over here, um, there's a lot of low-hanging fruit. I'm like, we should be streaming more. I was like, we need to be doing more media content uh, pushes. Before, it had been a lot of bottled stuff, which I love. I right. do want to do more edited, scripted, polished bottle stuff. But I'm like, we're not really doing any streaming. And I was like, AI is our strongest brand. Internally, uh, I, like, I, I put a whole pitch together, and, and Jerry was like, yeah, let's obviously do it. The big hiccup was, did uh, Mike want to do it, which he did not. Jerry was a little reticent about a weekly show at first. I remember when we first started, he was like, I don't know if I want to do this every week. But then after like the first show, he was like, no, it's fine, this is great. But he was very nervous going into it. But internally, we kept pitching it as uh, CSI Miami. We were calling it AI Miami. I'm right. like, we gotta make AI Miami. That makes we need, a lot of we sense. need a spin-off show. I'm like, we need to expand the cast so that if everyone wanted to do a live event and someone can't make it, we could slot someone else in. And we could put Kathrissa on the main done. stage. Yeah, we could put Kate Amy on the main stage. And no one feels like it's like, who's this person? Right. right? It's like an expanded roster only helps us from an IP perspective. Um, so when we were going through the lineup of stuff, it was like, yeah, Chris, obviously, right. super tight with us, very hilarious, funny guy. Handsome is all get out. Um, I don't know. About Amy, that. super close. Uh, and then um, Jerry was putting a lineup together when he was like, yeah, well, I'm going to DM this. Then he, uh, Rothfuss, put us in the direction of Kate. Yep. And then he asked me, because I'm hilarious. And uh, mostly because I've never played. Right. And he knows that when they started AI, when they first did the AI podcast with Watsi, mm -hmm. Mike had never played. Right. And that was a big hook. Like watching along with Mike for new players, learning with Mike, watching the progression of Mike he wanted to replicate. Right. Um, so he was like, all right, you're the new Mike for yeah. that. Because I was like, okay. Because if, if you go back to those old podcasts, you can hear in Mike's voice, he does not want to be there. Like, yeah. He's just like, I don't care. I don't know what this is. Yeah. Now I, he, I thought I owned this company. Why, do, why am I required to be here? Yeah. yeah. No. And now he loves it. Now yeah. he, oh, he yeah. loves Jim Dark Magic, loves D and D. He eats and breathes it. Um, but it was like just a, a conscious decision. It was a very, very smart decision to pick me. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the smartest. Probably the smartest decision that you've yeah. done that you've made. I felt really weird at first too because I was like pushing everything together on the back end for the show, and this was before we hired Alyssa. And then once we hired Alyssa, then it like turbocharged everything, and now she right. runs it and handles all the uh, the IP stuff on the back end. But like early on, I was like, oh, that's a little, it's a little weird that I'm like throwing the docs together for all this and being on it. I feel mm. yeah. Well, it's a lot to think about. I made him ask me formally. <laughs> I was like, I need to hear you say it. So he's like assuming, and I was like, don't assume I'm going to be on this thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, but make yeah. it awkward. I want yeah. you to ask me in front of everyone. Yeah. Uh, the company meeting. Jerry has something he'd like to say. Yeah. <laughs> All hands, Friday afternoon. <laughs> That's hilarious. So when, um, so your very first time playing is right there in season one, episode one. I had never played D&D before. So what has that arc for you been uh, been like for you, like personally, as like you're, you're growing up in front of the world, like so like a child actor, yes. but you're learning how to be a D and D player in front of all these people. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. Um, I think still, even though it's been three years, I still feel like you know there's a lot of stuff I don't know. Um, but storytelling is storytelling. Improv is improv, and everyone at that we are all friends at the table, yeah. and that all helps. Um, but even still now, there are 
there are D and D tropes that I am not familiar with. I'm right. familiar with like storytelling tropes, yeah. I'm familiar with television and movie tropes. Not as much for D and D tropes. And there is still like we will approach something and everyone gets it. Oh, oh this is that, and yeah. I don't because I'm like I don't know. what Can this you is. think of an example where you're like? Wait, I'm trying what to are we think doing? of a more modern one. There was one with a displacer beast. Yeah. Early yeah. on, yeah. yeah, and like everyone was like, "Okay, this was an encounter, and we killed the displacer beast." But we were supposed to stop raiders, and I was like, "Oh, was this just a misinformation?" And people thought there was raiders because they were just finding dead bodies, but it was actually the displacer beast. Yeah. I was like, "Was this a whole other different hook?" And everyone's like, "No, this is just an encounter. These it's happen. a random encounter. Yeah, yeah. just during a, just a thing, you get a monster thrown at you." And I was like, "Oh, I thought this was like an actual plot point." And yeah. I was like, "That's so, really clever." Yeah, yeah, and I'm like, "Oh, maybe this meant this," and I'm going down this weird rabbit hole, and they're like, "No, this was just a fight that we had." Yeah, no, who cares? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that happened. I thought if everything meant uh, something else. Yes. He rolled on a table for this. It's yeah. nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> That's really funny. So, um, yeah, and that must be a really weird world to get into because, I mean, you are, you're at Penny Arcade. You're, you, you are the guy behind all the stuff at PAX. And so you're clearly nerdy, clearly around all this pop culture stuff. But then you get into yeah. this, like, little niche and you're just like, Big part. What is happening here? You know. Yeah. No. It's it's it's. I've been having this discussion a lot here because there is. Um, it's funny. Everyone here at this event knows me from C Team. Right. Most of the time, I get recognized for PAX. PAX is by far like my full time job, and in, oh, yeah. we do five of these a year, and it's a lot of the uh, my mental uh, focus and energy, um, and it's and it's what I'm known for. I'm very proud of it, and it's like C Team is like the fun. It's like my vacation. It's like my my way to mentally like take a break for a minute, and yeah. it's just like oh, I get to go. It's like I always get excited because I'm like oh, Chris Chris is gonna be in the office on Wednesday because Chris comes into the PA office uh, periodically, and it's like I know Chris and Amy will be in there. We'll be able to hang out that day. I'm like oh, it'll be a, a lighter, easier day. It, it helps when the shows get super duper stressful. Yeah, but it's just like you know anyone looks forward to their home game right as a break. It's fun. I mean, I, people play D and D for leisure. I play C team for. Leisure, <laughs> you're right. Yeah. Even though it's a it's like this big thing, it's, it's a big, still, it's still yeah. a fun game for you. No, that's all yeah. it is for me. Yeah, is is it for that reason that you like let go of being decisionist? So you're like, I make decisions all day. I run this giant event. I don't need more stress in my fantasy life. Oh, when we uh, when switched roles with, yeah, for you, a little you bit, and Walnut, yeah. Um, yeah, no, how did that get? No, I think it was just a goof. Yeah, it was a goof that Jerry's like. I'll do it. No, he took it from her, mm -hmm. from Walnut to punish Walnut. Right, because uh, Walnut was mad at Dinar being like dumb and being so easily manipulated. Yeah, being a she, dumb baby. Yeah. yeah, and she was like, oh, and then and then Jerry was like, she legit wrote a note at, uh, uh, at the table. Yeah, which is like we want a new decisionist. And he was like, well, be careful what you wish for. Yeah. And he legit did that to mess with her. And then I was just like, well, this is funny. Right. And it played out very funny then when we did switch roles for a little bit. But uh, I'm happy to roll with everything. I like to, I mean, I approach everything from a very, as if it were a TV show. So that's how I always analyze stuff. Yeah. Which isn't necessarily accurate. No, I, but it's a good. I'm learning. <laughs> yeah, but it's a good framework to start with. you got to start somewhere. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, Chris, uh, for you, um, you know, I remember back during the first maybe Christmas, you know, where Rosie kind of has like crochets like apologies to everyone yeah. and calls Kathris oh, yeah. an esoteric lunatic. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you feel that that accurately <laughs> describes both a Kathris and two you? Careful. No. Oh. Okay. You you will be punished. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I think so. Well, I don't think it applies to me so much. I think Catrice is just me ratcheted up. Like, yeah. Well, like what blah, axis blah. is that? The whole one, Bad I one. think. The whole thing. I don't know. X? Don't you think? I, the thing is, like, early on, I wanted to say, well, I want to have a character that... Uh, so when Catrice was, like, just the self-insert in the intro, yeah. there was no class and there was no anything. And then no. when C-Team started... It's like, well, what should I play? Should I play another character or should I actually try to be a Cathris? Sure, yeah. okay, well, I have to do that. But then what class will he be? And I had wanted to, I always wanted to play a bard. I like bards. But uh, Pat Rothfuss kind of owns bard. I know he's a rogue. He's but not yeah. a bard, yeah, but yeah. But he's still, a bard yeah, enough. The, yeah. He leans heavily that way. He's yeah. bard adjacent. Right, so, <laughs> uh, but the fact that nobody had done a warlock, like, and especially not in like a horror context of like a yeah. great old one context. Right. I was like, oh, I can own that. Yeah. I would love to do that. Yeah. But I thought that I'll have this character and I will abstract myself and I will invent a character 
but then as we played it it's like oh this is just my stuff like it's yeah. actually me and we all kind of learned that element where it's yeah. like this character is a lot more of us than we thought it was when we started we were so we were being so clever yeah with this character we created and made up but then it's like no it's just like a version of me that would live there yeah exactly <laughs> and that's the thing with dnd uh, people find that they have inserted uh pieces of themselves into their characters oftentimes without noticing and that's when it probably bleeds over the most because when it's unintentional yeah and i've heard a lot of people talk um about how dnd literally is therapy for them. Yes. And I know there actually is, is really good work out there being done with mm -hmm. D&D and therapy, but in a less official way, just that time around the table with friends and working out fake problems, it really does become that catharsis for people. Has that been your guys' experience uh, playing D&D and C-Team? Oh, absolutely. Uh, and um, yeah, there are a lot of great orgs. The two Adams, what's the name of their org? Yeah, Game that's to what grow. I was thinking of Game too. To grow. Game to Grow. Game yes. to Grow. Yeah, yeah. those guys are they're, excellent. They're great, yeah, and they're yeah. doing good stuff. And that is, yeah, that's exactly, that's that's exactly it. They use that uh, to get like uh, like kids to open up and stuff, and it's so good. It's it's great. Um, I I think it's fun. I I don't know how much therapy I <laughs> put I into need. it from Dinar. I mean, uh, I do it more for the goofs and the gaffs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I firmly embraced my uh, you know comedic uh, that's angle at the table. Yeah. I don't I don't tend to bring the heavy too much. I could be the comic relief. But that's sort of the. Um like the the DNA of Ack Inc. was uh, the moment when uh, I forget which live game it was, the A Team game, but where everybody had to say a secret to this thing to to continue. It was when they were rescuing Will Wheaton from Hell. Yeah, the very first one at Pax. Yeah, and and Jerry's Elman says talks about his sister was lost. Yeah, and every, until then it was largely I mean, it's pretty goofy game, yeah, yeah. but comedy. But then all of a sudden there was like a oh there's a a like real a, continuity some buy-in yeah, yeah there's yeah. continuity now and yeah I feel like that is that's part of it it's like it's very allowed to be funny and I much prefer that than just like pain yeah. and trauma like I like yeah. that too yeah. but we have to be able to yeah you're right there's enjoy some, it yeah there's some games that are really serious and really earnest yeah and there's others like your guys is like you guys even joke that every episode is Valentine's Day you know where it's it's really it, it's a little body sometimes and just but fun and ridiculous at times but still a great show to watch you know so I I, I personally watch every single week and I love that you guys do this and I'm sad when you're on vacation so uh, thank you guys for doing the show I'm really 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 happy that you do it no yeah, well, thank, thank you so you. much yeah, yeah. you're good welcome here. thank you you're welcome no problem um now before we go is there anything that you um uh anything you guys want to promote things you have coming up um projects you're working on chris uh anything for you ryan that you want to kind of uh pump we've got the new ai book mm -hmm. buy that June we all 16th. worked on it yep uh we all worked on it it's great it's going to be amazing it's pre-sales are through the roof it's going to be really really good uh, and buy tickets to every single pack. <laughs> Always buy them. Unplugs on sale right now. We just put Dev on sale. And West a, is coming. And it's a good show. They're it's a good show. show. All good it's shows. a good show, guys. Come I'll be on. there. I'll be there. I'll be you there. See me? You want to see him? Yeah. Hey, you might see us both at the same time. Yeah. Buy those tickets to every one. Fly around the world. That's Gosh. all I got. All That's I got can promote is just packs. Sell packs. Yeah. Uh, mine is just go see to packs death. If you want to see what I'm doing, go to chrisstraub.com. That's all. That's the only thing you can do. That's the big container. I got a Patreon. Thing, I got a... There's a hit podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah. Speaking of the, my Patreon, I posted it. It's open for anybody to listen to. It's the Chuckle Chums podcast. I don't know if you it's, heard about this. It's I, I pretty actually. pretty incredible humor. It's good content. From uh, uh, Ryan and myself. <laughs> and the audio quality is amazing. It's <laughs> much it's, like this interview. It's yeah. not lazily recorded uh, most of the time in a car on the way to lunch or right. in a loud coffee shop. <laughs> yeah, for a while I was like challenging, actively challenging the yeah, listener. I I, you're going to hear us go to lunch and I'm not going to clean up the audio. That's it. I like, always just upload it. make fun of him. For, I'm like, it's, you're always on your Andy Kaufman bullshit. You want to try to like... It's like, if the audience really loves me, they're going to suffer through this right. screeching clatter of coffee cups around I us. want them to ask, yeah. is, has it started yet? Why <laughs> yeah. is all this here? Yeah. It's not a game. Yeah. To be like, did they know they were recording when they put this up? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 
Oh, then I'll have to definitely check that out. That does sound <laughs> it's right up it's, my alley. No, it's not it's, right. it's, it's, it's not worth any time. It's just it's just the anti promote. Yeah, don't listen to yeah, it. It's yeah. terrible. It's, yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, um, if I could uh, impose upon you one last time, uh, Chris, would you mind saying goodbye to everyone as Bugatti? <laughs> it's been a long time since I've done. I know. It's, it's oh, been yeah. Issue. What well, it was a pleasure being here. I hope you have a pleasant afternoon. I might sneak into your sock drawer. Sneak in your sock Make some holes in my own there, burrow in. Uh, hmm. What kind of socks you wearing, big boy? I got new socks. Oh, I'll mess those up good. <laughs> make your socks all dirty. Oh. <laughs> yeah, pitches, dirty pitches. Oh. <laughs> Thanks guys for watching. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Bye.